टॉपिक फॉर द डे इज साइमल्टेनियस इक्वेशन वर्ड प्रॉब्लम दिस विल बी दिस वीडियो विल बी एक्सक्लूसिवली फॉर वर्ड प्रॉब्लम बेस्ड ऑन साइमल्टेनियस इक्वेशन क्वेश्चन वन द मंथली इनकम्स ऑफ ए एंड बी आर इन द रेशियो एट इज टू सेवन एंड दे आर एक्सपेंडिचर्स आर इन द रेशियो नाइनटीन इज टू सिक्सटीन so ratio of incomes is given and the ratio of their expenditure is given if each saves that is a and b each of them they are saving 5000 per month okay anyway the monthly incomes and the expenditures were given find the monthly income of each fine fairly a simple problem now see we have the incomes given right so the let the ratio be 8x. I mean, let the numbers be 8x and 7x, right? Because the income ka ratio is given, so we can't say it is 8 and 7. So let the monthly income be 8x and 7x. If you want, we'll put in a bivariate table. That will be easier to understand. This is a. This is b. Then no need to write so many statements. You know, a and b, income, expenditure. savings this will be good it will save you the labor of writing six statements because bivariate table is self explanatory so what is the ratio of their income 8 is to 7 take care of the order huh? a is to b they have given you so let the income be 8x and 7x the ratio of the expenditures are 19 is to 16 so let the expenditure will be 19y And sixteen y. We can't take it as x. Huh? Savings. Each person saves how much? Five thousand. So, income minus expenditure will be your savings. Income minus expenditure will be your savings. So this will your savings will be here eight x minus nineteen y, and here it will be seven x minus sixteen y. now they are saying that each each of them saves 5000 so 8x minus 19y is 5000 and 7x minus 16y is also 5000 fine now we'll have to solve these two equations simultaneously you can go by any technique whatever you find convenient okay so this is now 8x minus 19y is 5000 7x minus 16y is 5000 okay how do we solve it now uh okay this we can multiply by 7 you are already aware of the techniques of solving simultaneous equations okay that has been covered in the previous video simultaneous equations in the bracket numericals and this is simultaneous equations in the bracket word problems fine so here we will equalize one of the two terms so this will become now 56x minus 19 into 7 how much 9 into 7 63 Uh, seven plus six, yeah, one thirty-three y is equaling thirty-five thousand. Remember, you have to multiply the equation throughout. Um, many a times, people multiply this first term, and they say, "Ah, equalize okay," and then they forget to multiply it throughout. Then naturally, everything will go wrong. Now here it will be fifty-six x minus eight sixteen eight zero forty-eight. So one twenty eight y is equaling forty thousand. Now what to do? Subtraction will work best so that x is getting eliminated. This is minus here also minus, but we will put plus because minus into minus is plus and minus. So actually we are subtracting throughout. So here minus, here also minus, but minus into minus plus. So we are putting plus and then here minus. So this will go away. Minus one thirty three y 
plus 128y. Now deal with the new signs. Minus 133y plus 128y. That is how much? Minus 5y. 35,000 minus 40,000 minus 5,000. So negative negative sign will balance out each other. So y will be 5,000 upon 5. That comes to 1,000. But hold on, this is just the value of y. Let us see what do you require. Don't be in a hurry to find x because this is not numerical solving that you have to find x and y. Now let us see what is asked. Find the monthly income of each. So monthly income, we took the ratio as 8 is to 7. So it was 8x and 7x. That means we will have to find x. Now, how do you find x? y is 1000. So you put it in any of the equations. First equation, the original one or the second one, whatever you feel comfortable. Let's put in the second one. So it will be 7x minus 16. 7x minus 16 into y. Now don't bother about this 8. Okay, We are taking this original equation. Minus 16 into 1000 is equaling 5000 so 7x will be now this is 16000 okay it, there it will go it will become how much 21000 so x will be 21000 upon 7 that comes out to be 3000 but again this is not our final answer they want the monthly income of each so monthly income of A. Monthly income was what? 8x if you recall. So that is 8 into 3000. Please show this substitution. Then you can do it mentally. So rupees 24,000. Double underline this. Then monthly income of B. That was 7x. So that is 7 into 3000 is equaling rupees 21,000. Double underline and we are done with this question. This is standard typical 4 marks question. So question 1 is now complete. Question 2. The sum of two numbers is 1000. Fine. And the difference between their squares is 2,56,000. Find the numbers. Interesting. So let the two numbers be x and y. Let the two numbers be x and y. Now see, they have, they have said difference between the squares. Whenever we take difference, the bigger number should come first. So now out of x and y, anything can be big. So we will have to specify which are you taking as a bigger one. So we will say x greater than y. Like the open mouth is towards x. So that is greater. So here we are taking x greater than y. You could even take y greater than x, no problem. But specify that. Okay, now sum of the two numbers is 1000. So first equation is x plus y is equaling 1000 and the difference between their squares is 2,56,000. So which one is the bigger? We have taken x. So it will be x square minus y square. Difference between their squares. And we have to take x first because I have said x is greater than y. So the bigger one will have to come first. This is equaling how much? 2,56,000. Okay, now how to go about this? This coming x square minus y square. And this is x plus y. How do we just solve them simultaneously? Directly we cannot, right? See, difference of two squares. Something striking you? Basics of 7th and 8th. x square minus y square is nothing but x plus y into x minus y. Elementary factorization. So x plus y 
into x minus y is nothing but x square minus y square. So x square minus y square can be rewritten as x plus y into x minus y equal to 2,56,000. Okay, now this is nice. So this I will erase. Okay, now let me come here now. Fine. Observe x plus y is already given. x plus y is 1000. So instead of x plus y, we can write 1000 into x minus y. See, x plus y was 1000 by the previous equation. So, we can put it to good use in the second equation. x minus y will remain like that is equaling 2,5,6,0,0. So, what will be x minus y? x minus y will be 2,5,6,0,0 divided by 1000. So, this will cancel. Oh, So, x minus y nicely turns out to be 256. Now we can solve that. Okay, this I will erase. Okay. So x plus y was 1000. x minus y has now turned out to be 256. So we get nicely two simultaneous equations. Okay. Degree 1. Easy. So what will work here now? We have to eliminate one of the variable. So addition will work. So, x plus x, 2x. This is positive y. y plus, because we are adding throughout, y plus minus y. Here, pehle se minus tha. y plus minus y. So, this will get cancelled. 1000 plus 256. So, 1, 2, 5, 6. So, x will be 1, 2, 5, 6 upon 2. 628. X is 628. But then wait, you want to find the numbers. Na? So, X agya bhi Y we require. So, X is 628. Now, you put it in this equation. So, 628 plus Y is equaling 1000. So, Y will be 1000 minus 628. How much this will turn out to be? 372. So, X is done. Y is done. Therefore, the two numbers are 628 and 372. You like this sum? This completes with your question number 2. Question 3. A man's age is three times the sum of the ages of his two sons. Okay, a man's age is three times the sum of the ages of his two sons. After five years, his age will be twice the sum of the ages of his two sons. Find the age of the man. Okay. So this is the man. And this is say son 1, son 2. Two sons are there. Huh? First son, second son. A man's age is three times the sum of the ages of the two sons. Now be careful. There are three people involved here. So if you take this as x, y, then this will become z and things will get complex. So let's see how to tackle this. A man's age is three times the sum of the ages of the two sons. That is important. We are not bothered about independent ages of the sons. So, what we do? So, there are two sons S1 and S2. So, let their total age, let the sum of their ages be X. So, it is not that son 1 is X years or son 2 is X years. Total S1 plus S2, the sum of their ages of the son, we take it as X. The sum of the ages of the two sons, we take it as x and man we will take it as y okay so now what is the relation given so we will write let the sum of the ages of two sons equaling x 
and let the age of the man equaling y this is x years of course and this is y years this is fine hmm? the introductory statement has been written now we'll erase this what is the equation given right now what is happening is man's age is three times the sum of their ages and we have taken the sums the ages of the two sons the total of their ages as x and man is three times of that so y is equaling 3x this is our first equation so we'll put it in this form y minus 3x is equaling 0 so one nice equation has come after five years after five years his age will be twice the sum of the ages of his two sons now after five years what will happen the man will become five years older and what they are telling you his age of the the age of the man will be twice the sum of the ages of his two sons now after five years the situation after five years after five years man will be how much y plus 5 do you agree right now the age of the man is y so after five years he will become y plus 5 so we would write y plus 5 is equaling x plus 5 because the total of the ages of the two sons is x after five years it will become x plus 5 no there is a catch there is a flaw in our argument Th these are two people these are two people it is not only one person so if there are two people after five years this son will also increase his age by five years and this son will also increase his age by five years so they are some will be increased by 10 see if somebody is 20 years right now say one son is 20 years after five years he will become how much 25 other son is say 28 years after five years how much will he become 33 okay first son like brother 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 abhi ye ek bhai 20 saal ka hai after five years he will become 25 another brother is say 28 years right now after five years he will become 33 now what is the sum of the ages right now this is the present and this is after five years so this is 48 see here how much it comes to 58 got it see 20 became 25 28 became became 33 after five years present sum of their ages 48 sum of their ages after five years 58 now look at the gap the gap is not five the gap is 10 years i mean their difference is 10 so what has happened is this person increases by five this whole person increases by five so their total ages and the difference between their original ages will be 10 years double of five that is why the same sum can be modified a man's age is three times the sum of the ages of his three sons then accordingly you will change so what is going to happen is after five years man will become y plus phi and according to the given condition y plus phi will be twice the sum of the ages of his two sons so what is the original sum of the ages of the two sons x after five years kya ho jayega x plus five nahi x plus ten ho jayega because this will also increase this son will also increase by five years this son will also increase by five years so a total will be ten so it will be x plus ten and not x plus five but man will be y plus five man won't be y plus ten because man is a single entity so after five years he will become five years more so this was the catch in the sum if it was three sons then 
then this would be x plus 15. So now y plus 5 will equal 2x plus 20 which is now a simple simultaneous equation. Let us solve it. Okay. So this is our y minus 3x is 0 and this will put the equation in standard form y minus 2x y minus 2x transpose take all the y and x terms on one side and numbers on other side 20 minus 5 that is 15. So we get two simultaneous easy equations. Now what will work here best subtraction. So minus here also I have to put minus but minus into minus is plus so we put plus here again minus this will go away minus 3x plus 2x is minus x minus 0 minus 15 is minus 15 so x will be 15 but what do we want find the age of the man okay so what we are taking the age of the man y so we we'll have to find y so x is 15 and if you recollect your first equation it was y is equaling 3x in the beginning the first equation so y will equal 3 into 15 that is 45 years so the present age of the man is 45 years see whenever they ask you find the age of the man it is understood it is the present age that is convention or you can call it by default so did you like this sum fine so it completes with your question number 3. Question 4. 90% and 97% pure acid solutions are mixed to obtain 21 liters of 95% pure acid solution. See, when they say 90% and 97% pure acid solutions, that means 90% is acid and 10% is water. Okay, so two different acids are mixed, acid concentrations are mixed to form 21 liters quantity of 95% strength of pure acid solution. Find the quantity of each type of acids to be mixed to form the mixture. Fine, we will have to now think like this. This is one solution, 90%. And this is another solution, 97%. They are now mixed. Okay. So we take some quantity from here and we take some quantity from here to form 95%, comma 21 liters. So what they are telling you, find the quantity of each type of acids, quantity. Now what happens, see we want 21 liters and the strength should be 95% acid. So you may feel okay, let's take 5 liters from this and 16 liters from this. So 5 plus 16 is 21. Somebody may say let's take 18 liters from this and 3 liters from this. Still it comes to 18, uh, 21 liters, 18 plus 3. But we want one more condition. We want one more condition, 95% strength. So there will be a unique quantity which you will have to take from here and take from here so that both the conditions are satisfied. So practical applications of simultaneous equations, we not only want the final quantity to be 21 liters, but we also want the strength to be 95%. So what do we do? We say, Let's take x liters from here and let's take y liters of acid from here. Fine with this. What is the thing? Quantity should be 21 liters. A condition wo diya hai. So x plus y will be 21. x plus y will be 21. One condition is satisfied. That is the quantity condition. Ki bhai 21 liters chahiye, to yaan se x liters le lo, yaan se y liters le lo. So x plus y will be 21. Fair enough. 
सेकेंड कंडीशन इज बेस्ड ऑन द स्ट्रेंथ 95% परसेंट स्ट्रेंथ नाउ वेन वी आर टेकिंग एक्स लीटर्स फ्रॉम दिस जार दिस जार हैज गॉट स्ट्रेंथ ऑफ नाइंटी परसेंट एसिड सो नाउ वी विल फ्रेम अ सेकेंड इक्वेशन इन टर्म्स ऑफ दिस इक्वेशन वॉज इन टर्म्स ऑफ क्वांटिटी सेकेंड इक्वेशन विल बी पर्टेनिंग टू द स्ट्रेंथ ऑफ द सोल्यूशन दैट वुड बी नाउ नाइंटी परसेंट ऑफ एक्स प्लस नाइंटी सेवन परसेंट ऑफ वाई नाइंटी परसेंट ऑफ एक्स स्ट्रेंथ नाव यूर टॉकिंग अबाउट द स्ट्रेंथ दिस इक्वेशन इज इन पर्टेनिंग टू टर्म्स ऑफ स्ट्रेंथ दिस वॉज प्योरली क्वांटिटी सो नाव यू आर टॉकिंग अबाउट स्ट्रेंथ सो नाइंटी परसेंट ऑफ एक्स लीटर्स प्लस नाइंटी सेवन परसेंट ऑफ वाई लीटर्स शुड गिव यू नाइंटी फाइव परसेंट total because here it is total isn't it so this equation pertains to quantity this equation pertains to strength now we have to solve both the equations simultaneously so both the conditions are satisfied and honored then only we will be able to achieve 95% strength with quantity 21 liters okay so this is x plus y is 21 fine let it be there and this is a new equation now so we can simplify this see 90% of x plus 97% of y is 95% of x plus y so we can simplify this now 0 and 0 will get cancelled so this is uh no wait then this here denominator becomes 100 and all na so let's keep it like that only we will see later on how do we deal with it so this would be 90% of x plus 97% of y and the strength has to be 95% of x plus y x plus y is the total but we know that x plus y is 21 so take here 21 now what can we do we can multiply the equation each and every term of the equation by 100 so we will get 90x plus 97y is equaling 95 into 21 this is one equation how much will be 95 into 21 just calculate this for me this will 95 into 2 will be how much 190 okay so this will be 190 1900 we are multiplying it by 20 and then plus 95 one more time it is 21 times na so 1995 okay so this will become 1995 this is 90x plus 97y is 1995 and the other equation here is x plus y is 21 now how to tackle we'll multiply this equation throughout by 90 so then both will become 90x and the term one term is equalized this will be 90 so this is 90x plus 97y is equaling 1995 and this equation i have multiplied by 90 so it will become 90x plus 90y is equaling this will be how much 9 1890 now what to do subtraction will work here so minus 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 because when you subtract one term gets eliminated totally so our target is to eliminate one of the two terms now this will be 97 minus 97 y is equaling 1995 
how much will be this now 1890 so 95 plus 10 105 so y will be 105 upon 7 so y turns out to be 15 liters we'll have to find x x plus y was how much 21 you remember old equation so x plus 15 will be 21 x would be 6 so we will say x is 6 liters and y is 15 liters if you write don't write the final answer statement also it is okay because in the beginning you have mentioned let x liters be taken from this and y liters be taken from 97 percent and in the end we are getting x and y so one can connect it right so the introductory statement is very important so once we write the introductory statement we have already defined what is x and y in the beginning so in the final answer then final answer statement it is not required but if you are i mean if you have the time you can write the final answer statement fine for these word problems Done. So, this completes with your question 4. Question 5. A number consists of two digits. When it is divided by the sum of its digits, the quotient is 6 with no remainder. When the number is diminished by 9, the digits are reversed. Find the number. Okay, before we take this sum, I will give you some introduction to this units and tens digit. Okay, this is a units and this is tens digit. Consider the number 23, our normal integer 23. How it is formed? 2 or 3 ko chipka ke? No, it is not like that. The number 23 is formed like this. 3 is in the units place, 2 is in the tens place. So, the number will be... 2 into 10. This is 10's place. Na? So, 2 into 10 plus 3 into 1. 20 plus 3, that is 23. Okay. So, this is how the number is formed. What would be the sum of the digits? Sum of number is 23. Okay. What would be the sum of the digits? 2 plus 3. What would be the product of the digits? 2 into 3. Okay. Comfortable? So, in general, in general, if the units place is x and the tens place the digits is, the digit is y. Digits are from 0 to 9. So, if units place the digit is x and tens place the digit is y, then the number, no dot, number will be 10y plus x. Then the number will be 10y plus x. What would be the sum of the digits? y plus x. What would be the product of the digits? yx. Product y into x or x into y. Whatever. Comfortable? So, three things are like to be distinguished between clearly. Number would be 10y plus x. Product of the digits would be y into x or x into y and sum of the digits would be y plus x. Okay, now let us come to this. A number consists of two digits. When it is divided by the sum of its digits, the quotient is 6 with no remainder. Okay, this is the first convert. So, what we will do? We will write here units and write here tens. Let the units digit be x and tens digit let it be y. Number consists of two digits, fine. When it is divided by the sum of its digit, when it is divided, it means what? Number. So, let us first find the original number. So, original number will be 10y plus x original number would be 10y plus x now they are saying telling you when this number is divided by 
the sum of its digits sum of the digits would be y plus x and they are telling the quotient is 6 so it will be 6 you know this divisor dividend quotient let's have a look at this see if you take some number say 18 we divided by 6 suppose so this is called the divisor this is called the dividend dividend this is called the quotient and this is called the remainder so what is dividend dividend is always divisor into quotient plus the remainder so 6 into 3 18 18 plus 0 18 suppose this was 17 this was suppose 17 and we are dividing by 6 so 6 twos are 12 this is 5 so this is the divisor dividend quotient remainder so 6 into 2 12 12 plus 5 comes to 17 now here they said the remainder is, is with no remainder so it is nice so this number we are dividing by y plus x and we are getting the quotient as 6 and there is no remainder so no problem so if you want to visualize this situation it will be like this 10y plus x this is a dividend number which is getting divided when it is divided by the sum of the digits so this will be y plus x and the quotient is 6 and there is no remainder so what will happen 10y plus x will be 6 into y plus x but this sum can be modified they will give you the remainder is say 7 then what would you do then you will write 10y plus x will be 6 into y plus x plus 7 because the dividend is always divisor into quotient plus remainder huh? take care here you got saved there is no remainder so is fine otherwise suppose the remainder was uh, 3 here okay the remainder was 3 suppose then dividend is equaling this 10y plus x would have equaled equal to 6 into y plus x plus the remainder which is 3 so this sum can be modified keep in mind this modified version okay this is clear let's simplify this little bit now so 10y plus x is equaling 6y plus 6x so get all the y terms here so this will be 4y now and x term 6x will come here x minus okay so 4 4y minus 5x is 0 this is one equation what we have got now let's have a look at the second condition when the number that means this original number is diminished by 9 that is reduced by 9 the digits are reversed so x comes here y goes there if you do this particular thing so if now digits are reversed number will also change that is what the framing is hinting at so when the number is diminished by 9 so old number minus 9 diminished old number minus 9 gives you new number so old number is what 10y plus x diminished by 9 minus 9 gives you new number but new number means what happens the digits are reversed so if you reverse the digits you uh, where do i write okay i'll show you here the digits are reversed so this will be x and this will be y the digits are reversed so what would be the new number now 10x plus y this is what is the subtle framing of this question so digits are reversed so you'll get a new number you will get the number as 10x plus y now simplify this this you get and i said 9y minus 9x and this minus 9 you take it here that is 9 
सो वाई माइनस एक्स इज इक्वलिंग वन डिवाइड ईच एंड एवरी टर्म बाय नाइन यू नो वी कैन वेर एवर पॉसिबल सिंप्लीफाई द इक्वेशन डील विथ स्मॉलर इक्वेशन फाइन नाउ वी हैव टू इक्वेशन विच वी नीड टू सिंपली सॉल्व सो द फ्रेमिंग पार्ट इज ओवर एंड दे सेट फाइंड द नंबर सो रिमेंबर नंबर मीन्स द ओरिजिनल नंबर दैट इज टेन वाई प्लस एक्स दिस इज फोर वाई माइनस फाइव एक्स इज जीरो एंड दिस इज वाई माइनस एक्स एज वन how do we solve this we can multiply this equation by 4 and this will also become 4y so 4y minus x is 0 here it will become 4y minus 4x is 4 remember to multiply each and every term subtraction subtraction will work best here minus here also minus but minus into minus plus then here minus so minus 5x plus 4x that is minus x is equaling minus 4 so x will be 4 but we need to get y so put it in this equation so x is 4 na no? so y will remain y y minus 4 is 1 so y is 5 but some doesn't end here the question says find the number and what was the original number 10y plus x so original number wo no dot is number that is 10y plus x so 10 into 5 plus x is 4 so the number is 54 so the original number is 54 fine you can even verify this You want to verify this answer? Okay, let's do it for this sum. Original number is fifty-four. Fine. What they are saying when it is divided by the sum of the digits, fifty-four. If you divide by sum of the digits, sum of the digits is how much? Five plus four nine. Fifty-four upon nine. Quotient is six with no remainder. Correct. We are also not getting any remainder. When the number is diminished by nine, so fifty-four minus nine. How much? Forty-five. The digits are reversed. Correct. Fifty-four minus nine gives you forty-five, and original was it was fifty-four. So what has happened? Digits have been reversed automatically on subtracting nine from it. So second condition is also satisfied. So we are correct. So this completes with your problem number five. Cut. Next problem. Action. Question six. a lending library has a fixed charge for the first 3 days so first 3 days when you take the book there is a fixed charge okay and an additional charge so even if you take it for one day that still fixed charge will apply and an additional charge for each day thereafter that is for the first 3 days the charge is fixed and after that they keep on charging you per day basis so the number of days you take accordingly it is shreya paid rupees 27 for a book kept for 7 days with her while arushi paid rupees 21 for the book she kept for 5 days find the fixed charge and the charge for each extra day okay i think like this 1 2 3 3 first three days the charge is fixed whether you take for one day two days or three days no problem the charge is fixed and then for how many days you take per day you have to keep on paying plus the fixed charge so you have to pay now what is happening shreya has paid rupees 27 for a book kept for 7 days so three days to fixed charge is there then 1 2 3 4 4 this is fixed so seven days aise ho gaya theek hai so what we do let the fixed charge be rupees x 
let the fixed charge be rupees x and then let the charge per day thereafter be rupees y rupees y this is not for the full thing this is for per day because they said na and an additional charge for each day thereafter so for 3 days there is a fixed charge so we can't take x x and x for these 3 days there is a fixed charge x rupees what we don't know and for every one single day thereafter it is rupees y per day now this way in this pattern what has happened shreya has paid 27 rupees for a book which she has kept for 7 days that means shreya's cost will be calculated as follows x rupees to she will pay that is a fixed charge that fixed charge takes care of 3 days but shreya has taken the book for how many days 7 days so she is liable to pay rupees y per day for the next 4 days only na? not for all 7 days because for the first 3 days there is a fixed charge x after that y rupees per day so after these 3 days of block in lock in period how many days has shreya kept the book only for 4 days because altogether she took the book for 7 days out of which for 3 days the charge is fixed x so remaining will be only 4 days 7 minus 3 so she will pay y rupees per day for the next 4 days and not 7 days because totally it is 7 so 4 remaining will be x plus 4y this would be the total charge that would be 27 so we got one nice equation now for arushi what has happened she paid rupees 21 for a book that she kept for 5 days so again now for 3 days the charge is fixed rupees x and arushi has kept the book totally for how many days 5 days out of which first 3 days she has to pay a lump sum amount fixed charge x so she will have to pay extra charge for how many days for the next two days only because totally she has kept the book for 5 days imagine this 5 days she has kept the book out of which first 3 days the charge is fixed and then after 3 days for how many extra days did she keep the book two because totally it is 5 days she kept so for each day how much she has to pay rupees y and then that those extra days for arushi will be 2 so she will have to pay 2y rupees so this would be x plus 2y is equaling 21 and these are now simple i mean easy equations to solve this sum can be modified that uh, say a contractor has to pay a fixed charge for the first 3 days and then a penalty is levied on him of rupees 1000 per day you know so how many days was did he delay the project if he paid this much penalty you know that kind of modifications are possible but they are all on these lines only so now what we will do you have understood this you can take it down by pausing the video we will now proceed on to solving these two equations so you will write let the fixed charge for the first 3 days be rupees x and the charge per day thereafter be rupees y per day okay so x plus 4y is 27 and x plus 2y will be 21 so what will work here subtraction Minus, minus, minus. This variable will get eliminated. 4y minus 2y is 2y. This is 6. Y is 3. We have to find x now because we want both. Find the fixed charge and the charge for each extra day. We want both now. So y is 3. So x plus. We'll put in the first equation. 
x plus 4 into 3 is 27. This is 12, 27 minus 12, x is 15. So the fixed charge is rupees 15 for the first three days. Whether even if you keep it for two days, no, but the fixed charge, lump sum charge is rupees 15. And thereafter, for every one single day you keep the book, you have to pay rupees 3 for every single day. And this completes your this interesting sum. So we are done with question number 6. Question 7. The sum of a two digit number and the number obtained by reversing the order of digits is 99. Okay. If the digits differ by 3, find the number. Okay. You already are aware of the concepts of this digit problems. We had explained to you some time back. So let the digit in the units place be x and the digit in the tens place be y. They are telling you the sum of a two digit number, original number and the number obtained by reversing the order of digits is 99. So old number plus new number is 99. Okay. Read the full sum. Don't be in a hurry to frame the equation. If the digits differ by 3 differ and there is a problem see suppose if the number is 75 what's the difference between the digits 2 suppose the number is 75 difference between the digits is 2 so difference between 20 and 5 is 15 and difference between 5 and 20 is also 15 because when we talk about difference we always can take the bigger quantity first so difference now here they are telling you digits are differing by 3 now we do not know which digit is bigger and by reading the sum it is not possible to find out also which digit is bigger right certain cases you know in certain sums it is framed in such a way uh, that you come to know that okay here units has to be bigger than the tens or tens has to be bigger than the units whatever in this case it is open ended so we will consider one case only we will say now let x be greater than y if you want y can also be greater than x in this case we will consider only one case from exam viewpoint presentation but accordingly, people will get two different answers for this question and both would be correct. But we restrict to one case, say let units digit be bigger. So let x be greater than y, open mouth is towards x, x be greater than y. Now the digits are differing by 3. So x minus y will be 3 and not y minus x, the way we have taken it. Second equation original number plus new number equaling how much 99 so original number will be how much now 10y plus x do you agree 10y plus x plus new number how do we get the new number by interchanging the digits that's what they have said so new number would be this is x and this is y the digits are interchanged now so new number would be 10x plus y and this total comes to 99 now 10y plus y is 11y plus 11x is 99 divide throughout by 11 to make the equation smaller so y plus x is 9 okay or x plus y is 9 fine whatever now we will solve these two equations simultaneously the first equation what we got and the second equation we will make it as x plus y we have taken care of the signs plus x here also positive x y is positive plus y is equaling 9 what will work here? Addition. So 2x is 12. 
x is 6. If x is 6, we will have to find out y now. So substitute in this equation or in this. So 6 minus y is 3. So y will be 3 here. But hold on, what the question says, find the number. Number means original number. So x is 6 and y is 3. So the original number was how much? 10y plus x. So 10 into 3 plus 6, that is 36. So the original number was 36 in this case. Okay with this sum? So this completes with your question number 7. Question 8. The sum of the numerator and denominator of a fraction is 4 more than twice the numerator. If the numerator and denominator are increased by 3, they are in the ratio 2 is to 3. That is the ratio of the numerator to the denominator 2 is to 3. Determine the fraction. That means the original fraction naturally. So let the original fraction, let the original fraction be x upon y. Okay. And we all know that this is a numerator, lower thing is a denominator. Now they are telling you the sum of the numerator and denominator of a fraction is 4 more than twice the numerator. So sum of the numerator and denominator x plus y is 4 more than twice the numerator. So twice the numerator will be 2x and they are telling you 4 more. So plus 4. So we got one equation. Let's simplify this. x minus 2x will give minus x. This will remain here. Minus x plus y is 4. This is our one equation. What is the second equation now? If the numerator and denominator are increased by 3, so we will have x plus 3 divided by y plus 3. They are in the ratio 2 is to 3. That means the new numerator and new denominator are in the ratio 2 is to 3. So I have already taken the ratio here. So right hand side also I have to get the ratio and that ratio is as 2 upon 3. Ratio form. Here also ratio form. Here also ratio form. So numerator and denominator both are increased by 3. Then their ratio is 2 upon 3. Straight. So this will be 3x plus 9 is equaling 2y plus 6. Simple cross multiplication. So, 3x minus 2y will equal minus 3. Keep x and y on one side and numbers on other side. So, let us now solve these equations which we have just obtained. So, this is minus x plus y is equaling 4. Equation from here. 3x minus 2y is equaling minus 3. How do we go about this? First equation we can multiply by 3. So then this will become 3x and then we will see what works addition or subtraction whatever. This will be minus 3x plus 3y is equaling 12. And second equation is copied down as it is. Now what will work here? Addition. Minus 3x plus 3x. So it will get eliminated. So it is nice. So addition will work here. So this will go away. 3y plus minus 2y. So that is y. 12 plus minus 3. That is 9. So y is 9. Now, substitute in any of this equation, say put it here, 
we'll do this over uh, let's put it here no problem so 3x minus 2y so y is 9 so 3x minus 18 is minus 3 so 3x minus 18 is minus 3 so 3x will be minus 3 plus 18 okay that is 15 so x will be 5 okay but what we want the fraction now when they say fraction one may wonder which fraction this new one or the original one by default by convention it is the original fraction they are referring to so the fraction will be original fraction was what x upon y where is x 5 x upon y y is what 9 done so the original fraction is 5 upon 9 and this completes with your question 8 question 9 there are two classrooms a and b if 10 students are sent from a to b the number of students in each classroom becomes the same if 20 students are sent from B to A, the number of students in A becomes double the number of students in B. Find the number of students in each classroom. Okay. Let this class, classroom A have X students. Classroom A, X students. Classroom B, Y students. Classroom A, X students. Classroom B, Y students. Okay. Now what they are telling in case 1? If 10 students are sent from A to B, from classroom A to classroom B, then something happens. What happens? The number of students in each room becomes the same. Okay. There were X students originally. Now 10 students have been sent. So what will happen is A will have, this is original, okay. This is original. Now this is case 1. If you send 10 students from A to B, so A will have how many students left? X minus 10. A will have X minus 10. 10 come ho jayenge and B will have Y plus 10. But what they have said now, the students have become equal. So X minus 10 is equaling Y plus 10. Case 2. If 20 students are sent from B to A, from classroom B to classroom A. So you have, you have to compare it with the original, not with this. All situations comparisons with the original. Now if you send 20 students from B to A, so what will happen? B will have 20 less students because yaha ke 20 students yaha pe chale ke. So A will have X plus 20 students because 20 students from classroom B have moved to A. And B will have Y minus 20 students. Because 20 students B ke A mein chale ke. Now what happens? The number of students in A, number of students in A becomes double that of number of students of B. So number of students of A, okay, have become double that of B finished so now here you just transpose x minus y will be 20 minus 10 will go here so this is one equation and here you will have x plus 20 is equaling 2y minus 40 so x minus 2y minus 40 minus 60 this is your second equation and i hope now this you can manage on your own solve these two simple equations simultaneously you will get the values of x and y and what have they said find the number of students in each room that means they are trying to tell you by default what we have told you the original case 
neither case one nor case two the original case they are telling you so you solve for x and y whatever answer you get so classroom a will have so many students and classroom b will have so many students originally so this completes with your topic hope you enjoyed it thank you so much